We all have haters, or we'll have haters at some point in our lives. But luckily for us, Disney has given us the tools to fight the hatership that we will endure. So without further ado, here are 10 ways that Disney taught me about haters. Number one, haters hate for no reason at all sometimes. Take Sid from the Toy Story trilogy. He has no reason to be torturing toys. I mean, maybe his parents didn't give him enough supervision, but he is deeply disturbed in a way that only years of therapy can cure. Look, sometimes it's not something you are, but rather something your hater's not. He's going to have a lot of problems for the rest of his life. Don't let them get to you. Two, haters are way creepier than you'll ever be prepared for. Take Jafar from Aladdin, when he does that whole thing where he makes Jasmine wear that red number in the chains. My childhood mind was totally f and you know yours was too. Like, I had no idea how deep Jafar's issues were, but clearly he wasn't just jealous of not being sultan, he just wanted women and power and naked helpless women. Like, his issues are super deep. He'll probably be locked up one day, so don't worry about it. Three, haters aren't doing anything with their lives. The Snow Queen from Snow White literally talks to a mirror all day long just to confirm her self-worth. Does this dress make me look fat? Am I the prettiest girl in all of my kingdom? Like all day, she's doing that sort of thing. The moment she sees somebody who's doing her damn thing, i.e. Snow White, she loses her sh If you have time to hate on someone else, then you aren't doing anything with your life. Number four, it doesn't matter how great their lives are going, haters still want you to fail. Take Ursula from The Little Mermaid. You know, the Octomaid, Sea Witch, Merpuss. The villain from The Little Mermaid. Okay, she's got everything going for her. Creepy eels, underwater superpowers. She's also got big boobs. Like, pretty powerful stuff, right? But she still finds time to hate on King Triton and his daughter who collects trash. I mean, clearly that girl's life is not going so great. So why do you have to convince her to give up being a mermaid to go make a cute boy fall in love with her? Like, that's pretty low. Haters can be that way sometimes. You aren't their problem, they are their problem. But they're still going to punish you so that they can avoid taking care of their own problems. Number five, haters are delusional. Scar from The Lion King has no reason to be upset. So he'll never be the Lion King. And maybe his nephew Simba, who is a little whiny baby, gets to be king instead of him. Scar, did you forget that you're a lion? Like, if you want to be a king and have lots of food and lots of women, all you have to do is go off and start your own pride. You're a lion. Did you forget that you're a lion? Like, I can't say it enough. Haters are the same way. They can't see the forest for the trees. They can't see their own potential. So rather than make their own way, they'd rather get in your way. Number six, haters have absolutely zero style. That villain from Pocahontas, Governor Ratcliffe, and side note, if you remember that the villain from Pocahontas' name was Governor Ratcliffe, like this video, because I had to look it up on Wikipedia. What is with that Pippi Longstocking's hairdo? And pigtails and a beard? Who are you fooling? If a hater comes up to you looking that ridiculous, just turn the other way. They're not worth your time. Number seven, haters genuinely think that they're justified in treating you this way. Cruella de Vil from 101 Dalmatians totally thinks it's okay to take puppies off a leash and wear them. Like, how do you get to that point in your life where you think something like that's okay? I mean, I personally don't wear fur because I think it's haunted, but she's come to a point in her life where she thinks that's fine. That shit's crazy. Haters are the same way. They will justify anything that they do so that they can continue to hate on your fabulous ass. Number eight, haters secretly love you. The Beast from Beauty and the Beast, and I know he's not the actual villain in the end, but he's definitely the villain in the middle. He totally hates himself for how much he loves Belle. So don't be surprised when one day your hater shows up and they're confessing their love to you because it totally happens. Number nine, haters totally lack basic human compassion and understanding. Like in Tarzan, that guy who hates Tarzan literally only hates him because he was raised by gorillas. Like he can't choose who his mom is. And his mom was actually pretty nice. All I'm saying is that haters won't ever see how you're alike, but they will always see how you're different from one another. And that's just sad. That's gonna serve them poorly for the rest of their lives. Number 10, haters never win. For the ones who are persistent, bad stuff ends up happening to them. They get eaten by hyenas, they get exploded over China, a bunch of dwarves push a big boulder on top of their ass. It ends badly. 
know that haters will not hate on you forever. Eventually, there's gonna come a point where something's going to stop them, and they simply cannot win. What other lessons has Disney given you about haters? Let me know in the comments below, and I'll see you real soon. Bye! I think I've got it. Number one, haters hate for no reason sometimes. Like Sid from the Toy Story. I don't know if you heard that air bubble in my neck. Sea Witch, I don't know, she's the villain in The Little Mermaid. Basically, she has everything going for her. She's got sea eels. I don't know what they're called. They're just called eels, I think. 